got your blue belt. Now what? I specifically remember when I get to put a blue belt on what was one of my white belts. It's a very important occasion, but it's simply a step in your long-term journey. I've said in earlier posts that the white belt is the most important white belt. Uh, it's most the important belt in jiu-jitsu because the white belt is what you put on on your first day on the mat. If you never come in, you never put a white belt on. You haven't by not coming in, by not trying class out, you haven't even earned a white belt. That being the case, the white belt is the easiest belt to obtain because you just literally have to walk into the studio and join up. But the, your first taste at earning a belt doesn't come until blue belt. And the blue belt, it's not an easy belt to earn. I've had people earn it in as little or as few as four months and as long as, say, about 24 months. I've had a bunch of people just drop out and leave without even ever earning the blue belt. You know, once uh, I remember talking with a, a coral belt friend of mine, and we're just talking about our schools and kind of what lays ahead for, for us. This was back when Kamba Jiu-Jitsu was just opening up. Well, the, the Texas schools, but Kamba Jiu-Jitsu has been around since 92 or 93. That particular master was telling me how he needs to bring in 30 white belts just to keep one person who stays long enough to earn a blue belt. So let's kind of repeat this again. For him to put a blue belt around somebody's waist, he had to walk through or he had to teach 29 other people at the white belt level before he finally got to award one. Our numbers aren't quite that that skewed. Um, we're probably running at about an eight or nine to one. Um, so we need about nine, eight or nine people to walk into the studio, um, join up, become students, um, and then out of them, out of out of eight or nine, one of them will become a blue belt, which isn't bad actually, uh, because our program is not an easy program, and and, and most jujitsu programs are not. But ours doesn't have anything to do with attendance, none whatsoever. And you can come to a few classes, you can come to a lot of classes. It really doesn't matter. It's just your individual ability to to persevere and to to work. Uh, those who work harder will get it will get it in fewer classes. You know, the assumption is they, they train a lot, you know, put extra time training with uh, with some more senior students, or they end up, you know, doing private, private sessions to, to increase their, their knowledge base. But once you get to a blue belt, now what? Well, the, what, what is the blue belt? The blue belt means that you had just achieved the first color change of your belt. A lot of people, you know, if, they're, if they are very goal-oriented, meaning their goal is to get that belt, I would say a lot of those blue belts in due time will quit because for them it was like a high that they they achieved and now they realize that to go from blue to purple will take even longer so they're thinking is man do i really want to go through this all over again you know, they they don't they didn't enjoy the journey and they're not going to now and there's a good chance that they were just holding out for the blue belt once they got the blue belt they'll quit but I would say those are no more than half of the people that, that get awarded the blue belt because a lot of the blue belts that I've awarded, they're still training. What do you do now? Well, once you're a blue belt, you need to, you need to take a little different um, tact. So now instead of learning the basic curriculum, now it's all about becoming better at the basic curriculum. We do teach some new stuff. Um, some new material to some to the blue belts. Um, it's not that they don't learn anything new. They they do, but the focus is not so much. It's to learn a few new things, but you also have to get better at the things that you learned as a white belt. Because just because you do a basic thing, you learn basic things in white belt, doesn't mean that they're not valuable uh, to you when you become a black belt. Guard pass that you learn uh, as a white belt, you can definitely continue to use as a black belt. The only difference is uh, the way a black belt executes and the way a white belt executes that same move is going to be a little different. Um, it, it's different in terms of tightness. It's different in terms of speed. It's different in terms of uh, pressure and weight. All that, all those types of things come into play. So as a blue belt, your goal is not to go and dominate people because there's still purple, brown, and black belts ahead of you. It, it's really to try to get yourself to the next step, which would be purple belt. 
You know, what do you need to do? Well, you need to learn the new things that you need to learn, but you also need to go back and get better at what you already know. Don't think that if you forget or, or stop focusing on what you learned in white belt that you can continue to move on to purple. That's not true. You need to get better at what you already know at the same time trying to pick up new techniques. Blue belts learn some more techniques. I don't think they learn as many as white belts do. To get from white to blue, you learn a lot more techniques than you do when you get to get from blue to purple. But you do get better from blue to purple at executing those techniques, plus you get a few more. Uh, and the same thing happens with purple belt. What happens when you get the purple belt? Well, we can go over that in another video. But <laughs> your goal is to learn as much as you can, uh, get better at what you're doing, and be able to execute at a blue belt level. Once you get to the point where you're starting to execute at a purple belt level, then that's where the purple belt comes. Uh, it's really all up to your professor. So just keep plugging away. Um, the journey's just starting. Anyway, have fun. Bye.